He's a busman local mom, one of the upcoming riding stars in the SEC. He's also one of the top players in Mississippi State. Coach Smith, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. How you doing? Can't complain. Well, before we get into this, I know it's obviously been a hectic year for you guys. You guys are coming to a close of the COVID pandemic season. You guys are in the offseason, not getting ready for next year. How are you feeling personally, though, about the whole season and just about getting ready for next year? I feel great. I feel like we got a great team this year. Um, I feel like last year was a, a great learning experience and um, more of a rebuilding year. I feel like this year is a, where we make our mark. You know, I'm just happy that the fans will be back in the stands. So. Absolutely. Well, we're going to get a lot into Mississippi State. Obviously, you guys have a lot of additions and all that. We'll talk about that in the end of this. But I want to go back and kind of get to your story that's kind of led you to this point in time now. And for starters, we have to start off with your name. I know, obviously, you go by Tolu Smith. I know background behind that. So kind of walk us through your name and kind of how you became a Tolu. Well, um, I'm part Samoan. Uh, I don't know if many know what that is, but it's a kind of like Pacific Islander. And, um, and Samoan, Tolu means three. I'm the uh, third in my family. So my mom always called me Tolu. And uh, my brother's name, my brother's nickname is Lua, which is two in Samoan. So we just go by nicknames. And... Uh, yeah, that's how my name is told. So, I also read that when you obviously put your full name together, it makes gems up. Take us to ask yeah. your name. Yeah, gems. Uh, some of my dad. Well, it ran in the family. Um, uh, so my name is Galen Edward Mitchell Smith, and the first letter of each um name is G E M S. And um, my family was like, uh, y'all are like the gems of the family. So, just um, something that I guess they made up. And it's, Pretty cool, actually. So. Now, you originally, I believe, were from Mississippi. I know you ended up going out to Hawaii then for your senior campaign, but take us to growing up out there in Mississippi. What was that like? It was, uh, I mean, it was great. I mean, Mississippi is great. Um, people are very polite down there. And um, just being in your hometown, it's always going to be, you know what I'm saying, always going to be great. Um, the competition was great, too. Um, being able to play with my big brother and, um, my teammates from high school, Darius, Traylon, um, Jalen, Chris, uh, people like that, just being able to play with them has been, always been fun. So that was always great. Now, obviously, a lot of the area back down there is a lot of really football place that's really known for football. And basketball doesn't get as much of a spot like because of how big football is out there. So how have right. you kind of grown through? Like, what was it like in terms of basketball atmosphere where you guys don't necessarily have the spotlight that football does and kind of put you guys down a little bit less than that? Well, when we were in uh, high school, I feel like um, basketball was jumping. Like we, uh, we had the stands like filled, and everybody wanted to come to the games. When we, I think it was my junior year, sophomore year. Um, yeah, I feel like although football is real big on the coast, and it always will be. I feel like that year that we was playing basketball it was, um, it was just big. So. Now, obviously, you grew up in a family that involves a lot of basketball. Your mom played at South Alabama. Your brother went and played at the NAIA level. Your dad played basketball growing up. Like, just growing up where you have a lot of people that you can play basketball against, kind of learn from them and their experiences. How big was that for you? It was great. I was in the gym every day mm -hmm. uh, growing up. And, um, thank uh, my parents. Thank for my parents. They had gym access. And, um, so I was in the gym every day, and I learned a lot from them, especially my mom, because, um, you know, she was low block post score and stuff like that. So I mm -hmm. she had all the accolades. Um USA played collegiate level like you said. She was just played at every level like I was. So she she knew the ins and outs of uh, basketball. My dad did too, because he did his research and um, he knows basketball as well. So just learning from those people. I still learn from my parents to this day. So just having those people in my um, corners has been great. When did that ball first get put in your hands? Were you kind of at a young age? Did they weigh a little bit if you get older? Like, when did that ball first get put in your hands? Man, I was I, – I can't remember the exact age, but I was really young. You know, um, my dad always made me play up. Like, he never let me play in my age bracket, which helped me out a lot and um, helped my brother out a lot too. But, uh, it, it, yeah, I think when it was – I want to say it was seven or eight, I was playing bitty basketball, a little local um, basketball league, and I never played with my age, like I said. So it just made me tougher, made me play harder and stuff like that. So now I know you now are about six foot ten in that range, at least. Have you always had that height? Like, have you always been taller than the typical kid? Did you have one big growth spurt? Like, how did you grow into being six foot ten now? Well, my um, 
My sophomore year, no, no, my freshman year, I was like six, two, six, three, or something like that. Mm -hmm. I was playing like kind of like the guard position. Like going ninth grade and going to my freshman year, I was playing like the guard position. So I feel like that's where I helped with my footwork and my ball handling. Mm -hmm. And then just one summer, I just had a growth spurt. Just, I think, grew like four inches or something like that, about six, eight, something like that, going to my sophomore year, then kept growing. Now I'm like 16, something, I'm 16 around that. So. And as you mentioned too, you obviously have a brother that's played basketball now. What was that like growing up with a brother that's a little bit older than you? You get to go get into some one on one. I can imagine you guys had a lot of those games. What was that yeah. like? It was great having um, a brother that loves basketball just as much as I do. Mm -hmm. My height, but um, great player, just a great mentor for me as well. Um, he showed me a lot basketball wise. He still does. Um, obviously, I mean, many, many people don't know like, he can shoot really well. And um, I'm still like trying to work on my jump shot. So I always get tips and advice from him and um he was down here recently working out with me and it's been great so i know a lot of times the older brother even if the younger brother ends up passing them up and hide or talent wise like they're not going to really want to give up too often so when did you get your first win against them my first win I, I don't know it's been back and forth i know last time we played we was in houston with um timmy bowers from mississippi state i don't know if you know what that is but mm -hmm. um College player, Mississippi State, professional player, all that. But we was working out with him, and we played ones a lot. And we came we came back tied, like tied scores. So it was fun. Um, he got a lot of game. I got a lot of game. So we always compete. When you look back at all the memories you guys created growing up, what's the first memory that comes to mind with them? The first memory? Man, it's a lot of memories. <laughs> it's a lot of memories. Uh, the first memory I say, we – I don't know. We we did we did everything together. Honestly, uh, I I appreciate my parents for that. Uh, just make having like a blessing, like making us um like do everything. We used to wear the same clothes, and it, it sounds corny now, but <laughs> honestly, it just it made us our bond go stronger. So, but in, in regards to the first memory I could think of, um, man. I can I can go back as far as Stanislaus, like when we were in private school, like eighth grade, ninth grade, he was just showing me the ropes. I was uh I was um going into eighth grade or something like that. I was I was in some public school and he was at a private school and then I ended up going to a private school for my eighth grade year. And um I just remember like it was yesterday, he was just telling me everything, like what I should do, what I shouldn't do, like just trying to tell me uh, how I should I approach things and just basically being a big brother for me. And, um, he still does it to this day. So I always look back at times like those. Absolutely. Let's head into your high school career because obviously that's what ended up developing into becoming the division one guy you became. So let's head into that very first freshman season. Take us to that year. Man, freshman in high school, I was uh, playing JV. I was playing JV with uh, one of my um, great Coaches that I still talk to to this day, um, Coach Lauren James. Um, I didn't, I didn't get the opportunity to play varsity until my sophomore year, um, but my junior varsity was um, a great experience for me too because it it kind of humbled me and then you know it just I got to play. So I was playing JV, just trying to thrive through there. And um, my sophomore year, I got the chance to play varsity and just ran with it. And that's the storyline that obviously is huge about your journey because we look at you today, your guy that's at a power five school, just put together an exceptional sophomore campaign. And you really are a guy that yeah. people are even saying, like, you can be an NBA prospect potentially down the road too. And you're right. going to start on varsity, you didn't even play varsity your freshman season. Like, how crazy is that to you when you look back at that? And how much did it even inspire you and kind of put a chip on your shoulder going back to that point? Well, um, I feel like for me, I'm always have a chip on my shoulder. Um, mm -hmm. I just got the mindset, like, there's always somebody's out there trying to work harder than me. I don't like that. Like, I, I just go in there with the mindset of, like, I'm not willing, I'm not ready to lose, and I don't want to lose. So, um, growing up in my high school years and going into my college, even my college year, I was struggling at times. Um, I had a lot of obstacles I had to face, but um, I just put God first, and I put my head down and kept working. And that's all it is, really. There's no secret ingredient or um, – no formula for greatness is just 
just work. That's all it is. So I just used that formula and just kept going with it, man. It got me here and it's going to keep giving me places. So. Now, if someone would have went back and told you heading into your freshman season that you're eventually going to become this guy that is a guy that's going to be one of the top players in the SEC, you're going to be one of the top players in the country, even at your position. Like, could you ever imagine, like, would that have been something you could have seen in your future? Would that have been shocking to you? Like, how would you have reacted to that? Uh, honestly, I would have thought she was crazy. Um, <laughs> I, I, um, I honestly didn't have a lot of confidence in my freshman year. Um, I just, I was just playing. I was just a little kid, just playing basketball, um, not expecting anything. But uh, I always knew I wanted to play in the NBA. And my, uh, I told my dad at a young age I wanted to play in the NBA. And he, he ran with it. Like, he pushed me to the limits. And I still thank him to this day for that. So, um, I say, I say he was crazy, but I, I did, I never put it past anybody that I um, would want to get to this level. So. Now, when did that dream first start becoming almost a reality? Like, when did you start feeling like, okay, I f- truly do believe I'm confident now that I am one of the best players I've time step on that court. Like, when did that happen for you? Uh, I say, I know me, I was late bloomer, but mm-hmm. my aspirations never changed. I was always uh, wanting to be in the NBA, wanting to be one of the best in college basketball. And I pray for those things every night. I pray to God that, um, Nothing changes in my mindset, doesn't change. So in regards to like when I felt that, I say probably my freshman year, going into my sophomore year, I just like, I can do this. Like there's I don't think there's a lot that can stop me if I just keep going. And um I just like I said, I just ran with that and uh, I just had like a great people in my corner. And these people motivated me and kept pushing me. Um to be what I am and keep driving to be what I want to be. So, when was that growth spurt? Because obviously you said you had that huge growth spurt one summer. Was that from freshman to sophomore? Or when exactly did that yeah. take place? I can't really call it. I think it was freshman to sophomore year. I think uh, it was either freshman to sophomore year or sophomore to junior year. I just remember one one summer. I just had a lot of knee problems, and I was just like, "What is going on?" And then we had measured. We measured up one one day, and I was like. Six, seven, six, eight. <laughs> and they was like, yeah, six, seven, six, eight. And I was just, oh. So I guess some knee problems were for nothing. So I was just, it was just one summer. It was just like a lot of, um, a lot of stress on my knees and a lot of uh, tendonitis and stuff. Like basketball players know what I'm talking about. A lot of that itis in your knees, and wondering what's going on. Like, and that's all it was, just a lot of growth going on over that summer, so. And we've heard those stories too, as you mentioned, you kind of grew up running a guard position because that's more what your height was before. How has that helped you now? Because as we see today, you technically are like the four or five, but we see you weren't run out the wing sometimes. Like you can bring the ball up over here and there. Like you have that modern day kind of this alternate position kind of person. How much did that help you though from your younger ages running the guard position now today and helping you in your college career and playing today? It helps a lot. Um, just having great footwork. Um, cause I feel like some things are still taught to this day. Like even at my level, like still trying to get taught like footwork and balance and being able to dribble and handle the ball, having good hands and stuff like that. So it just helped my game. I know personally a lot being able to take slow defenders or um, bigger defense, bigger defenders that's on me and take them to the rack or having mismatches either way. So I feel like being being at the guard position at a young age kind of helped me. Um, just thrive now as a college player. So it's heading that sophomore season. You guys end up going 19-9 that year. You average about 8.6 rebounds. You start getting on varsity now. What was that sophomore year like? Sophomore year was good. Um, I think – I'm not sure how far we went. It's, it's so far back I can't remember. But mm-hmm. I remember we had a good team. and um, We had a lot of uh, great guys around us. And I think we – I think we lost to some kind of buzzer beater, some crazy shot, and it was just a tough loss. And uh, I knew my junior year coming back, we had an even better team, and we were just going to come back with a, with a different mindset. And I felt like we did, but uh, it just didn't turn out how we wanted to. So, Probably the best part for you personally and your brother was that your sophomore and junior year, you guys play together on a team, which I know every brother dreams of. So what was that like? It was great playing with my brother. I wish I could keep playing with my brother to this day. I just I love playing with my brother. Um, 
it's just some some kind of bond on the court is just unmatched. I feel like when I'm with my brother or when I'm playing with my brother, we can't lose. And if we do lose, it's like, how do we lose? Because it's like, it's just, it's us. Like, we know each other. We know what we want to do. We know what we don't like. We, you know what I'm saying? So it was it was always great playing with my brother. Um, I feel like at the time, we were kind of on a, more of a childish mindset as a high schooler. Um, we kind of, we had like little bickerings every now and then, but I feel like, we should have we should have played through that at, at the time. We played great regardless, but um, I feel like we should have went a lot farther than we did. But that's the deal. No deal. I just enjoyed playing with my brother and playing with my teammates that I had at the time. Like I said, um, I had some great players around me. Um, although some of them didn't go college basketball, they I feel like they should have. Um, but there was just some great players and a great group of guys that I still talk to to this day. So. Heading into that junior season, all of a sudden you guys come together with a 20-plus win season, only six losses that year. You have a huge breakout year, almost averaging a double-double. You had two blocks a game as well. You get player of the year in all Southern Mississippi. Like, walk us through that season. Obviously, you just two years ago, you weren't even on varsity. Now you're accomplishing all this in your junior season. What led to that junior breakout? Uh, just being in the gym with my dad. Um, mm-hmm. My dad, me, my brother, my dad, my mom. But my dad was real – Influence and real impactful in my life for basketball, and he still is. And um, he helped me with a lot. Uh, the days I didn't want to get in gym, and when I was when I was younger, and had that, that I just want to go have fun with my friends. Mindset. I told him already I want to be in the NBA, so there's no taking that back. So it's like there's no time for fun. Like we're going to the gym, and I was in the gym so much to where it's just like it's fine. I go. Being in the lab is fun. So um, he had that that discipline ingrained in me. And that whole summer and that whole year, even through the season, we'll um, – sometimes we'll wake up in the morning and work out. No, I say, like, most of the time we'll go work out in the morning at our gym, go to school, have practice, and at night we'll work out with my dad. <laughs> and it's just a lot of work. And it's just – I just knew it was going to pay off, and it did. And um, some nights that – we didn't like our team would come to our gym and work out, but some nights some people didn't come and it would just be us. And that's how I had to be sometimes. You know? But my dad knew it was for the better and he knew that he knew our dream and he knew my dream. So he just pushed me to that limit. And I still thank him to this day for that. All in that season, you make an interesting move that I think some people might be surprised by. Obviously, in hindsight, now we see it worked out just great for you. But you obviously were already in Mississippi, and like we said, it maybe wasn't the biggest spot I could have in terms of basketball player. Then you just had to go all the way out to Hawaii and you play there for your senior season. What led to that move? Like, why did you decide to go from Mississippi to Hawaii then for your senior year? Yeah, well, um, I had family out there in Hawaii. Like I said, I'm part Samoan. Uh, my uncle was a coach out there. Mm. So I just decided I wanted to get closer with my family. You know? My people had moved to Marini, so uh, – they just felt it was a better opportunity out there in Hawaii. And at the time, I was like, why, why go to Hawaii? I'm, who's going to come see me in Hawaii? Like, what college wants to come see me in Hawaii? And I was sadly mistaken. My high school coach, Coach, uh, coach Connor, great coach, he uh, he just promised that people going to come see you. If you're good, they're going to come see you. And I was just in the back of my head. I was like, all right, well, we're going to see. And I kid you not, like the first – First two weeks, I had a whole bunch of coaches in the stands in this little local gym, just in the stands, just watching me work out just by myself. And I'm like, wow, I didn't expect this. This little local gym in Hawaii, this real duck dog, cool, cool high school. And I, and I, I still thank them for the, to this day, uh, the Red Raider Nation, for like, allowing me to um, be able to represent their school and their city. And, um, yeah, I just like I went there and it was a great experience overall. So, so at that time, did you want to stay back in Mississippi? And was more like your parents wanted you guys to go out there, or was that something that you also kind of wanted to go out there for? The, the decision was undecided, really. Uh, personally, I wanted to stay. Um, I really wanted to stay on the coast with my people and play one um, my class in Bay St. Louis because I feel like we was going to get a ring. Mm-hmm. But um, my parents had moved. I, I said so it was, it was no way I could stay out there 
it was some kind of rule like if you don't live in a district or something like that, you can't go to school there or something like that. I'm not too sure. So um, it wasn't a lot of options leading up to my senior year. So my parents felt like it was the best option for me. And uh, in hindsight, it was. But me being so stubborn, I was just like, I don't want to go to Hawaii. Like, I feel like I'm going to be on vacation. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it, it wasn't a vacation, but it was fun. But it was just, I, I just kept that same discipline that I had in Mississippi. And my dad was with me, so it wasn't a vacation. So. Now, also, you were a guy that wasn't ranked too high. I know you had a three-star in Rivals, but like you had offers, but you didn't really have the rankings behind your name. So how would you handle that? Like, I know it's not, for my, in my opinion, really, I'm not ever a big fan of rankings. It is what it is. But I know sure. for a lot of guys, like, you still would like to see your name in that mix. Like, if you want to get recognition for what you're doing. So how did you handle that? I think I handled it pretty well. Like you said, I mean, the rankings are going to be rankings. I feel like it's all it's it's political at times too. So mm-hmm. um, when you get to college, the rankings don't mean anything. Like you either you can play, or you can't play. So um, I didn't know that going into my high school year, my senior year, I was like, man, well, I'm on three star. Well, I don't some websites I didn't even have any stars. So I just, but I knew I had offers in the back of my head, and you know, I knew I had offers like leading going into my senior year, stuff like that. So I wasn't really tripping about it. I mean, every high school player want to be ranked in some sense or some form, but I feel like I handled it pretty well. Um, I didn't, I didn't really get too hype about it. Just um, kept to myself about it and just kept working. So let's head into that senior season. You guys go out there and you guys go twenty-five and six. You have twenty-one points, ten rebounds. You get two blocks, two assists per game. You get player of the year out there. Also, the number one selection on the defensive team. Take us to that senior year for yourself. Uh, that was fun. Senior year was fun. Um, it was a lot of uh, it was a lot of winning going on and a lot of just camaraderie amongst the team. A lot of trust in me, and um, it gave me a lot of confidence going into college. Just just being able to be the player that I am, and um, I feel like Coach O'Connor just gave me the freedom to play. He just said, basically, just he wanted us to he wanted me to lead us to the to the promised land. I tried my best too, and we got. The, but um, we feel short in championship. But I feel like that whole senior year was a learning experience in itself. And uh, I feel like I learned a lot. And uh, I got a lot better going out there and just gaining my confidence and becoming the player that I am today. That senior year helped a lot. So. Yeah, now, we do hear, like you said, you are Samoan background. And there's not too many players that play at a high level like you are that have that background. And if they're just not really vocal about it, so what kind of pride comes with that? Like knowing that you represent your heritage, your family background, what pride does that kind of come with it when you're going out there and you step on a court to play at Mississippi State or wherever you play in your past? I like to rip my my um, my people as much as I can. You know? mm-hmm. I got a love. I got a lot of love for um, my culture, and I, uh, my mom always always tells me to um, never forget where I come from, and I never will. And um, I feel like my senior year. It really helped me get closer on that side, on my mom's side, because um, in Mississippi it was most it was dominantly black people and white people, and that's all it really was uh, down on the coast. So going to Hawaii and being able being able to be around a whole bunch of um, Polynesians and being able to um, see that side of my culture, it was great. It was great for me and um, just helped me learn and gain that experience and have a a, a genuine appreciation for my people. So and I, I still rep my people to this day. So, yeah. in terms of food, which one do you like more? Like the Polynesian food more? Or do you like food from back home in Mississippi? Man, you can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. I I love the food more. Honestly, but I love my I love the food on coast. Um, I can't call it, man. I I love them equally. I say that I love them equally. But my favorite food is always going to be musubi. I love musubi. It's a, it's a dish that I used to eat um, after school every every day in Hawaii. And I just I love it. It was I don't know if you know what it is. It's like spam and rice. It sound it's going to sound weird to some people, but I love it. It's like spam and rice wrapped in seaweed. Mm-hmm. It's good. <laughs> it's good. So. Absolutely. Well, you then obviously are going this recruiting process. And like you said, you have offers on the table. 
ranging from Jackson State, you got Jacksonville State, you got you got all different types of schools in the mix for you. Like, take us through this, and ultimately, as we know, you end up at Western Kentucky. But walk us the recruiting process, and what brought you to Western Kentucky? Uh, so going into um, my senior year, like like you said, I had a couple offers. I had like low D ones. Um, I had some JUCO offers, and my coach at uh, my coach at uh, Kuku, Coach Akano was like, um, you can get all these offers out here. And um, in the back of my head, like I said, I was just, I was just like, all right, well, we're going to see. Mm -hmm. I'm just play, I'm play as hard as I can. I'm going to do everything he says, and we're going to see. And like I said, two weeks in, I had San Diego State call, and I had UNLV, Syrac uh, not Syracuse, Stanford, mm -hmm. all these other um, high schools. And I had some schools come to my gym, like two weeks in for me. Two weeks in for me flying into Hawaii. And I just, I was like, wow, it was crazy. And um, before I just made a crazy decision, I felt like I I took a visit to West Kentucky and I had committed um, on spot on at the visit. Just, I fell in love with the, um, with the location and I fell in love with the atmosphere of the school. And it was great. And um, I mean, I don't regret the decision. Decision I made, honestly, it was our learning experience in itself. But I feel like I should have um, paced my recruitment more, and, um, weighed out all my options. But weighed out all my options, honestly. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of uh, a lot of interest, a lot of offers from different schools um, during my senior year. But it is what it is. I'm here where I'm here. I'm here where I am now, and I'm just so thankful for being here. So. If you remember back, is was there a number two favorite school? Like, was there someone else you really were interested in that you really liked and possibly even had a number two? Well, honestly and truly, Mississippi State always been like um, my dream school. I growing up being a Mississippi kid, it's always been my dream school. But my senior year, I want to say I really like I really like Butler at the time. I was I was rocking with Butler at the time. It was it was showing hard interest, but they never offered. But yeah, that's probably my number two school. And I didn't really get an offer. I didn't get no SEC offers until my transfer. So I didn't really, I didn't get no interest from no SEC schools to my transfer year. You also brought Stanford as showing interest in you and they're recruiting you. And that's obviously because you're academics. And that's something I want to touch up on because there are some players that value academics, but not necessarily to your level. You got honor roll, back to back years now in the SEC. There's someone that has always had a high GPA. What's led you to balance both basketball and that? And what's kind of led you to have a priority in your academics so much? My dad, my dad, um, I got a funny story. So my sophomore year uh, in high school, my dad, no, 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 my freshman year in high school, uh, I, I had a real report card day. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I had all A's and a B. I was, we, had, we had a game that day. So I had all A's and a B. I'm like, I'm good. So I get my dad a report card. I'm getting ready for the game. He's like, what's this on this report card? And I was like, what you mean? He's like, there's a B on this report card. I'm like, okay, it's a B. Like, All right. <laughs> he said, you're not playing today. And I, kid, I was like, he got to be joking. It's a B on the report card. I, I'll be all right. <laughs> I come to the game. I go to the game. And um, I go in the locker room. My dad hit me up. He was like, you're not playing today. Like just being serious and more serious, and as the time go down, I'm like, are you really serious about this beat? So <laughs> in the locker room, I'm just sad, like, like tearing up, just real upset about the beat, because I'm like, there's no way that I'm not gonna play a basketball game because I got to be on my report card. And he was just, he just was like, you're not playing. And my coach was like, what was you upset about? You, we finna get ready for the game. And I'm like, coach, I can't play. He was like, why you can't play? He was like, because I got to be on my report card. And he just started smiling, like, are you serious? Like, Who said that? And he was like, my dad. And um, he was like, all right, we're going to see. So we go out to the court, start warming up. I start warming up. Um, it's JV at the time, so there's not a lot of fans out there. Mm -hmm. So I start warming up and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, maybe he'll let me play. I just you know, leave my leg up, do stuff like that. We get ready for the starting lineup. <laughs> we get ready for the starting lineup, be like, Everybody quiet. And you just hear him in the background. You better not play him. He not playing. And I'm like, I was like, oh man, I can't play for real. 
So I got to sit on the bench. And my coach over there, like, yelling back at him, like, why he can't play? He's like, he's not playing. <laughs> I just couldn't play the whole game. So I'm on the bench tearing up while everybody else on the court playing. I just, it's just that just goes to show how strict my dad was with my grades in high school. At the time, he just wanted to build that discipline. Um, going into college, just wanted to build that foundation of like, hey, you, you, I know you love basketball, but you need this to get to this. So he always instilled that in me. I just rock with that to the day. And I also say um, another big part is my academic advisor, um, the one I have now, Sawyer Byron. She's a great person. She really helped me out a lot. So, so was that just a one-game thing? Did you get to go play the next game then? Yeah, I played the next game, but it was a one-game thing. It was more like a lesson. Mm-hmm. It's like a little lesson showing me that he's not playing. Yeah. So have you had a B since that point, or have you had now like a seven-year streak now of all A's? Oh, yeah. No, nah, I've had a B. Yeah. When I got to college, you was like, you're a grown man. You're going to get what you get. College is way harder than high school. But at least you instead with that, like, you got to do this, do this mindset. So, yeah. Well, let's head into that first freshman season for you. And you obviously are part of a recruiting class with headed by a guy that at the time was a top level five star. Someone's going to be drafted this year, possibly in the lottery, possibly a little bit after that. And Charles, like, take us through playing with him. What was that like? And Take us through that year playing alongside him. It was great. Uh, he's a great player, great dude. Uh, we still keep it touch to this day. He's a really good dude. Um, my first year going to it, I was, I was like, yeah, we're gonna be good. I was, my coach at the time was telling me like, I, we, I could play the four, play the five, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it was, um, it was, it was real good going to my freshman year, and you know, I had got like an injury in my my foot. I had to sit out, and I couldn't play until I want to say like the third game of the season. So I'm I'm trying to get back right, and it just it never got back right. So I was just I was um I guess like trying to long trying to trying to get back to 100, percent but I never could. But in regard to Charles, he's a great player. Um, he deserved to get drafted this year. And I'm uh, I'm just thankful to be able to play with somebody like that. So. Did you guys know each other prior to committing there? Or do you guys get to know each other once you guys both were committed and you guys obviously played together? No, I didn't know him prior to committing. Um, more, it was really like a kind of like a late commitment for Charles. You know, I, I think he reclassified or something like that. So yeah, he um, reclassified, and then one of them days he just walked in the gym while we was playing, and we just all played pickup. And that was probably one of the best pickup sessions we had. So it was fun. He also decided to stay three years in college. You guys could have still basically been together, had that worked out. And if you guys just kind of hypothetically kind of looked at that and you would have put you and Charles together at the four or five, how dominant mm-hmm. could you guys have been and what could you have accomplished now in the past three years? There's no telling what we could have accomplished. Um, I feel like we would have went really far. I think we would have won the conference, obviously, but mm-hmm. in regards to like going to the tournament, it's, it's, it's unpredictable. There's no telling, but... I feel like we would have been a, a force in the record, with, honestly. But I mean, that's a lot of what is. So, but it was it was great to play with them guys at West, and I still keep up with them guys. So, now when that time does come, and whatever team ends up landing him in the draft, what are they gonna be getting, Charles? Um, they're gonna get a dominant big. Um, somebody runs the floor hard, defensive mindset, uh, just a great player, great guy overall. Funny guy, too. So he's a character. So he's going to be a great guy. Even though you had a lot of ups and downs with injuries stuff that freshman year, there were a couple of games that were kind of standing out. One was the one against West Virginia, a high major program, and we know Coach Huggins seems never easy to go score against. You go out there and you have nine points, which was just season high, too. Walk us to that night, and how big was that for you confidence-wise? It was big. Um, it was real big. Uh, I was going through an injury at the time, and I was – just getting back where, like you said, so mm-hmm. playing through all that and just being able to have like a kind of sort of like a breakout game. Um, as a freshman, it felt good and I felt mm-hmm. like it was really impactful for our win. And it was a power five win, right? Mm-hmm. So it was it was a great win for the team. So I just I thought it was a great win for the team. And I thought it was a, a big confidence booster for me and itself. So. We obviously see how dominant you could have been this past year, thirteen and eight. 
what led to this breakout eventually? Like, do you think, were you that talented your freshman season? Could you have put those numbers together? Had you been healthy the entire year? Was it just, you know, sit out last year and redshirt that season? Like what led to, and ultimately how did you get to this point? How I got to this point was just God, just God's will and God's glory being able to um, shine his light upon me uh, each day and just give me the strength and determination to be successful each day. But um, would I have done that my freshman year? Who knows? But um, I'm glad I still at that level that I have now. But I feel like the rest of you really helped me um, being able to work with guys like Darius Zimmerman. And um, just and Tevin Baskin and, and all the coaching staff at Mississippi State just growing with me and being able to play against players like Reggie Perry and Robert Wood and um, just bigs like that and Abdul. Players that really like um, really made a name for themselves in the SEC and are trying to make a name for themselves in the NBA. So just being able to be around guys like that, just you ain't got no choice but to get better. So. You put your name in the portal fall in that season, and you have a large selection of schools that come after you, or at least talk to you. I know LSU was in the mix, Arkansas, Texas A&M, West Virginia, and also, obviously, Mississippi State. So walk us that process and what ultimately led you to Mississippi State. Yeah, I, um, man, I had a lot of offers coming out of my transfer portal. Uh, I didn't know where to go, honestly. And in all, in all honesty, I feel like my, my parents made the decision for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a great decision. I I didn't know where to go. Um, I was stuck between like three different schools, and it was coming down to that time. And, uh, Mississippi State was, wasn't really in the mix at the time, only because they had came later in my recruiting, and I was like, "Well, they came late, or they shouldn't. I don't know if they should like deserve as much attention as they as the other schools that's been recruiting me since I got out of the portal." Well, um, my dad was like, yeah, man, it's a, it's a great school. It's about an hour from us. Um, great coaching staff. Uh, let's just take a visit up there. And I took a visit up there, and I, was, I wasn't all the way sold on it. Um, although I, in the back of my head, I'm like, this is my dream school. I always want to go here. But, you know, after after transferring, you like, it's not so much about dream school. It's about what's the best fit for you. And um, my dad was like, this is school. And my mom was thinking the same thing. And I'm like, what, what makes it, what makes y'all think this is school? And it's like, this is school. So I just, you know, when it was all said and done, I just went with whatever they said. And uh, God forbid it was the best decision that we made as a family. I feel like just um, allowing them to pick the school for me and um, allowing them to uh, open up and hear what they got to say. So just getting that option. At that moment, I felt like it was a blessing in itself. So, yeah. so if you look back, if they didn't really get involved too heavily, like you said, you might not even ended up out there. So, where do you think you possibly could have went to? Like, would it have been Arkansas? Would it have been LSU? Like, where do you think you could have ended up ending up at? I know for a fact it would have been the SEC. Uh, in regards to like what school it would have been, I don't know. I I really like LSU. I liked uh, Arkansas. I liked um, A and M. I like West Virginia. I like West Virginia a lot, um, but uh, I just I really I really went with uh, what I, what my family felt like was the best decision. And my family felt like Mississippi State was the best decision, and um, I feel like now like that was probably the best decision. And I just I just I don't know. I just I feel like they always know what's right for the kid. Um, I feel like a parent knows what's right for the kid. So I just went with what they was going with, and it was the best decision. So, and you even mentioned it, like having the fact that it was a dream school, kind of a little bit was nervous for you, just saying like, okay, I know it's all you want to find the best fit, not just what you've always loved. And I know that probably about ninety percent of the time, we see a lot of guys come out of high school and say, okay, I'm going to go to uh, Blue Blood or even wherever the local school is, whatever the kind of dream school is, and they end up transferring out pretty soon. So, how are you able to balance both those sides? Like, how are you like, okay? I know this is my dream school, but I need to really look at is this best fit for me. Yeah, my um, my dad did a lot of research on the program, and, uh, on who's coming in, who's leaving, uh, uh, what that research is going to do for me, and stuff like that. We took a lot of uh, time to talk and evaluate schools, and um, we asked the right questions, and I feel like 
I didn't do a lot of talking, honestly. My parents did all the talking for me. And I'm glad I didn't do a lot of talk. I just sat back and listened to whatever what, what the coaches had to offer. And and truly in hindsight, like all the SEC at all the SEC schools, like they offer the same thing. Like it's it's all great facilities, it's all like top level basketball basketball. You're gonna get the same thing out of each program. It's just really I wish for for us it was like which program was really gonna have our back and really gonna um, believe and trust in your abilities. And Mississippi State was that team, and um, they really, they really um, believed in me and believed in my ability. So, once you finally did officially decide, okay, this is where I want to be playing at. I'm gonna come to my dream school. I'm gonna come back home and play. And you finally kind of got on campus and you got settled in. What was going through your mind now, like realizing, okay, now I get a little my dream as a kid. Now I get to go stay home. My family's nearby. How exciting was that for you? It was really exciting. Um, just being on campus, uh, my freshman year, I was on a decent sized campus, but being on SEC campus is different. Like, it's, just, it's huge. It's um, a lot of people, a lot of interactions. So, all that was great. And I'm not uh, big on like uh, going out and stuff like that, but just being able to see the venues and being able to um, experience like a football game or a baseball game is just it's great. So. Um, and my rest year was great too, because that was prior to COVID. So I got to see the stands full, everybody come out to watch the basketball game to see what the hype is about. So I love it. I, I love this program. So well, I've had obviously a lot of guys on that have discussed being in the transfer portal and obviously getting the free eligibility is a huge thing. And I've always been in favor of that, but I've heard a lot of guys start mentioning that that year was so critical for them and their development and becoming who they end up becoming eventually. So what's your overall thoughts on, like, do you think that getting the free year of eligibility, is that something that's going to be good for guys? Or do you think that having the extra year to sit down, learn the system, learn the playbook, kind of just get around the campus more, like, is that more beneficial for a lot of guys? I feel like it depends. Um, I feel like for me it's beneficial. Um, but I feel like players is like grad transfers like in their third year. It, it's players that want to play. And I – I uh, truly understand that um, they want to be in a better program and stuff like that. And they, they feel like they got the ropes of college basketball. But for me, being a freshman going into my sophomore year, I didn't. You know, I just had the mindset, like, I just want to play, play, play. And I had to, I had to realize, like, I'm going into the SEC. Like, I'm going to a higher conference. So I need to, like, figure out the physicality and figure out um, the athleticism. And I need to change my body because my body was, like, just freshman year body. And um, I feel like, my uh, strength and conditioning coach, uh, Colin Crane, did a great job of um, changing my body and transforming me. And we just we spent a lot of hours in my restaurant you in that doing it, uh, transforming my body, uh, getting in great shape, tip top shape for the season to come. And um, kept reminding me that uh, your time is coming and to be ready and stuff like that. So I feel like. Uh, for certain, like I said, certain players, is, it all really depends. Um, for players that are really young, I feel like taking that risk, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, just being fully prepared for, like, um, for the next year to come and just being at your best. So. And that year couldn't have been a better learning experience for you. You guys had a pretty solid team, 2011. Obviously, COVID affected everything, so we don't know how good that team could have been when it really matters in the tournament, but – Overall, you get to be around two guys that are now playing in the NBA, one of which is probably about ready to win a championship ring in a couple of weeks. Learning from those two guys, like guys that are on, you're pretty much your position. You got Robert Woodard, who's obviously a great player. You got Reggie Perry, who's obviously been doing his thing out there for Brooklyn, two on two way. How big were those guys for you just developing that year? They're great. Um, they're great friends of mine. And I still keep in contact with Reggie every now and then, but Rob is like, a, like one of my best friends. So we still keep in contact. Um, he always tells me about the NBA experience, you know, um, what it takes to get there, and just like the ins and outs of the NBA. And just having them in college around me was great. Just the competition level um, each and every day, just, uh, just making me better and making them better. So um, it was great um, just being around pros. So. What would you say is the funniest memory you have from that retro season? The funniest memory? 
if it was any funny memory, it was probably Rob. Rob was a really funny guy. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I can't call it out. Hmm. Let me see. I didn't get to travel mm-hmm. with the team, my red surgery, but a lot of home games was funny. Uh, Rob is a very funny guy. Like, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes in the huddle, like, it'll be like a tight game or something like that, or some real, we'll be real serious in the game, and Rob just look at me and just start laughing or something like that. And just, it just goes to show how much, like, he gets a real sense of humor. You know? Just a great guy overall, so. Just having those memories with him is just always going to be great. So we all always on, um, keep in contact. Obviously, both those guys are immensely talented to fly to the NBA. But to be a guy that makes that small, small selection of guys that end up playing at the next level, they have a different mentality. So what was that? Like, just witnessing two guys that have made it now to that level, what's the mentality like? Like, what, what was different about them? Besides just obviously them being much dominant as a player and skill-wise, like, Mentality wise, personality wise, like what separates them from the rest of the team? Just being a dog. Um, just having that dog mentality. Like, uh, just, you know, I'm going to take what I want. Like, I'm going to take what I want. And I'm gonna, you know, just having that kind of mindset. Uh, I feel like you wanna, if you're going to get to the next level, you got to have that mindset. I'm just a doggy world. So, uh, just being able to, um, bring it every day and being consistent and efficient. I feel like that's what really helped him get to the next level too. So We have to talk about Coach. Coach has obviously been great with you guys so far. He's had consistently great records, even with you guys being a pretty overall young team last season. And you guys still went over 500 when we've seen so many young teams that didn't play so well last year. So what's it just been like playing for him now? It's been great. He's very knowledgeable. Um, very great coach, man. A great person overall. Just um, he wants the best for all of us, and um, the best thing about him is just he believes in me and believes in the program. He believes in like, all his players that he that he knows. Like gets in the gym, gets in like he knows who's working, he knows who's not working. So he, uh, I feel like he um, thrives off of just having blue collar athletes and people who are willing to work. He like he likes uh, solid guys around him and great guys. And, that goes for all the coaching staff. They're all great people. And uh, the program overall is just great. So, yeah. What's your favorite memory with Coach Allen so far in your first two years out there? Man, um, unfortunately, I feel we didn't get to – I didn't get to play in the NIT. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we would have won. If we would have won and I was playing, that would have probably been my, my best memory. But um, at the time, probably – Probably Florida game or um, Missouri. One of those big, one of those big wins that we had. Um, we had a couple of big wins. So after every every big win or just in win in general, we do this little thing. We celebrate. We walk in the locker rooms, like clapping, 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 and out of nowhere, just start screaming, and then we scream right behind them. Those are like some of the best memories. Um, so I feel like maybe Ole Miss too. Those are those are some big memories too. So. Now, for you personally, when we look at you, you kind of had to come out of nowhere season because if we go back, obviously you came in with not being a highly ranked player. You didn't really have any rankings beside the three-star and rivals. You went to a, a really good mid-majors team, but obviously numbers weren't nowhere near as special as they were this year. Then you obviously read shows people probably didn't remember you too well. You come out now, you start every single game, you get almost averaging a double-double, 13-8, and 1.5 assists, a block. Like, how did this all come? Like, did you expect for this to happen this year? Did you do better than you expected? Do you think you could have done better? Like, take us through this breakout this year. Uh, I feel like I could have did better than, than what I did. Uh, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to be satisfied with my work. I mm-hmm. kind of like that perfectionist mindset. But uh, I feel like this year was a great year for me. Uh, it was a great rebuilding year for our team. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that red shirt, like I said, really helped. Just really had me had that hunger mindset of going into my uh my my year of eligibility. Um but that red shirt you really just uh, made me proud to be better. Just a lot of course side watching and a lot of um observing and uh, it just helped my game overall, just um being able to see and being on the other side of the court and not being able to play, and being able just to uh, observe the game and really develop a, 
people, I would want to say, really develop um, a different level of, like, mindset for the game. Because um, when you're out there playing, you're just playing. But when you out there just watching, you just studying the game, it's kind of a, kind of different. So being have, being able to have both sides of the um of the game just really helped me. So did Coach Howland expect this for you this year? I think if you look back, I'm sure he's excited about you now. But like, did he expect you to be a guy that's going to be a go to score? It's going to be a guy that's going to be a top three score on the team. It's going to be a starter every single game. Like, did he expect that heading into the season? Yeah, I feel like he expected that. Um, he expected me to uh, rebound the ball um, as as well as I did. I feel like, um, in regards to scoring, I'm I'm not sure what his expectations were, but I know he I know he knew that I could score, and he knew that I was one of the best players in the SEC. So uh, I'm I'm not too sure about all his expectations, but I know he expected a great season out of me. So. And you had countless great games this year. You had 10 plus with 10 or more rebounds. You've had four games of 20 plus. You had 20 games of 10 plus. Like having all these games starting to really get the consistency in your game. How big was that for you? And how did you manage to sustain that consistency through a COVID pandemic season? Being able to sustain that through a COVID year was kind of tough. Um, not, I wanted to play with fans, honestly. Like, I feel like the fans would make the game more fun and acting uh, more. Uh, th- more of a thrill for the team, but um, I feel like this year was great for us. And um, being able to play overall just was fun. Being able to get that, get out there because after sitting out a year, so I just it's a long year. Like just not being able to play basketball, you find any kind of way to play basketball. Like I was out there playing in the park, playing in in the rec, got my red shirt. You're just trying to find some kind of pickup because I'm I'm that eager to play basketball. So I feel like. Even the beginning of the year, if people watch like some of my games, in the beginning of the year, I was really like fast paced and did some of my moves really fast. And I just had to slow down. Uh, and that's what my coach was trying to tell me, just slow down during the games. And, um, yeah, I just I just was really excited and eager to play that this past year. And then um, just being able to play and have fun with uh, the great group of guys I had was so so fun for me. So. At what point would you say you got settled down? Like, was there one game specific to that all of a sudden just clicked? You're like, okay, everything can make sense now. I'm feeling comfortable on the court. Or was it just over time that kind of happened? Uh, I say it was over time. Um, the really, really the big learning experience was um, Kentucky. The first Kentucky game was, was very rough for me. I didn't have a good game. Man. Um, the, that next game, I had a really good game, I think. I'm not too sure, but I just knew I had to slow down. Um, uh, preseason, I, I had a, I had some good games too, and I was really slowing down. But SEC was just a different level, so I just had to get used to that. And as the SEC went, I started getting better and better. So it just like my coach was saying, just slow, um, slow down, and just play at your own pace is where I had to learn. So pace is a big thing in basketball too. So. Two games I really do want to touch up on, one of which is Florida, 27 points, 14 rebounds. What got into that night? Man, just my team. Um, just my team knowing I had a mismatch down there. And, uh, just playing as hard as I can. Uh, I, had, I, had a really, I had a really great point. I'm a really good guard, um, DJ Stewart. And he really helped me out with that game. He, I think he had a lot of assists that game, too. So, just, but I don't know. I just, just went into the zone. Um, it was just, just a great game overall for the team and a great win for the program. So it was, it was a fun game. The other big one came against LSU, 24 points, 11 rebounds. What what went down that night? How did you have that performance against LSU? Um, I, I don't know. I just, it's just one of those games. I, uh, I can't call it, man. It's just. Just going into that zone, like I said. Um, although we didn't get that win, that was a good game for us. That was a fun game for uh, me, but uh, the, the loss wasn't fun. But everything else was fun. I'm um, just being able to play uh, those that kind of competition. Like they're really good offensive team, so just being able to play those guys, you know, being being able to go against that level of talent. Uh, they had four guys that could really score the ball, so. I just want to see what the hype was about, and it was fun. So, 
out of every game this past season, which one was your favorite one? Ole Miss. Ole Miss is my favorite game at Ole Miss because we we had lost to Ole Miss at our place, so we were just trying to get them back. And, you know, that's any rival school, you want to try to get back. Um, yeah, Ole Miss and Mississippi State being rivals, I feel like that's a really important game for us. So being able to come to their home you know, and beat them was great. Uh, trying to stop them, I feel like, from getting to the tournament. So I feel like it was a great game for us, and it was really fun afterwards um, being able to celebrate that win. So. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a couple of guys I do want to touch up on from this team this last year. One of which is DJ, who we've obviously now announced about a month ago now. He's not coming back. He's going to be in the NBA. I think he should get drafted at some point. But what is the team going to be getting DJ? Whoever lands him, rather it be they draft him, they pick him up right after the draft. Whoever gets DJ Stewart on their team, where are they going to be getting him? You know, versatile player uh, uh, who can stretch out the floor, willing to pass the ball. He's not selfish at all. Um, I feel like uh, he can really handle the ball well. Just um, He became a real vocal leader near the end of the season. Uh, just a great guy overall off the court, too. Um, somebody will take – he'll give you his shirt off his back if you need to. Like, he's that kind of guy. So being being around that kind of guy has always been good. Um, I feel like they're getting, the, um, like I said, versatile player that can play the wing or the point guard. He played the point guard for us near the end of the season, so – yeah, you're getting a great player overall. We also talked about Reggie and Robert, who also were NBA guys, we said. How much does he relate to them in terms of that mentality? Like, are they, is he about the same? Was he any different, better than them? Like, where does he compare or relate to those other guys? Uh, yeah, I feel like you got that mindset, too. I feel like a lot of our players have that mindset um, going into the season. Um, yeah, I feel like, uh, like I said, a lot of players got that mentality, but in order to get to the NBA, you gotta have that, that dog mentality. Um, I feel like for some of us, like, oh, we got that mindset, but you know, it's just I feel like it was more of a time thing. And, uh, DJ felt like it was his time now, and I, I I agree with him. He's an NBA player, so it's just a matter of time for him. So the other guy from us, I think, will be an NBA player eventually too. And there was the other part of your big three from last year, that's Iverson. What was it like playing with him and this, how special are you guys together? Oh, he's a great guy. Uh, great guy off the court. Um, he's a great guard, too. Uh, can score at uh, many levels. And great shooter. Uh, great pilot shooter. So, he uh, he's a great player. Um, yeah, he's just a great player, too. Great guy to uh, be around, so. Now, someone else obviously decided to transfer away from you guys. He's obviously heading out to Georgia Tech now. Is Deion Smith. How special is he, and what is Georgia Tech getting in him? Georgia Tech's getting a good player. Um, great point guard. Great uh, great athleticism. Just He's a great guy to be around, too. Uh, he's funny. Um, just, just a good guy. Um, he builds camaraderie amongst the team, too. Uh, they're getting a good point guard out of him. Um, pass first guard, um, can score with. Just a player like that to have on the team is just great. Uh, and although he was the first one last year, I feel like he uh, he made big strides near the end of the season. And I think he I think he led the SEC in assist to turnover ratio. So that just goes to show how much of a player he was. So. Well, my last thing before we wrap about this upcoming season is you look at all your teammates you've had so far in college. Who's been the funniest one? Mm, it got to be Rob, Rob, just because, like, our sense of humor is similar. So, yeah, our sense of humor is uh, similar. And we've been around each other a long time. Like, I play AAU, and he always been funny, just goofy dude. So, just being around him has just been funny all the time. Like, he, I don't know, in serious situations, you can't be around him. He always got jokes, so... Well, so upcoming season is going to be a huge one. I personally will always be super high on you guys in terms of the future. Obviously, movement happened, but you guys have a lot of big returners coming back. And you guys add in Rocket Watts, who's obviously a special player from Michigan State. Shaquille Moore, who I'm super high on. You guys add in Garrison, who obviously is super special. DJ is coming in. You guys add in a lot of freshmen and Alden and Keyshawn, Cameron. Like, you guys have just a lot of great players coming into this team next year. How special can this team be? 
We can be we can be as far as we, we can go as far as we want. I feel like we're a Final Four team. Um, and I speak so well in our team because we got that kind of talent. Yeah, we look really good on paper, so we just got to put it together. Um, it's just a matter of us um, and our coaching staff just coming together as family, um, figuring out our roles and being able to sacrifice for each other. So I feel like we can be really good, real special this year. And um, uh, Although some teams or some some people might doubt our capability, but I think this might be like one of the best Mississippi State teams we've got, we've had. So it's only been about two weeks or so of you guys on campus now getting to see the new guys. Is there anyone that kind of shocks you so far? Has there anyone that's either come back much improved from the last time you saw them play, or is there anyone that's transferred in now that you're like, okay, this guy's gonna be legit. He's gonna really be a big time player for us. All the transfers are pretty good. Uh, for the returners that's coming back, I say um, it's, like, everybody's looking really good. I say Cameron Matthews is looking really good too. Uh, Derek Fountain's looking good. Mm-hmm. Uh, all those, all those freshmen and sophomores, uh, they are looking good. Anderson Garcia, all those guys looking good. So all of all of our guys look good. Um, I feel like the players that's transferring in and the players that's they already made a name for themselves. You already know what to expect out of them. Or, um, so I feel like the guys that are going to make an impact are the ones that we don't really know about. So, Personally, for me, heading into the season, I have SEC as the best conference this year for basketball. I think a lot of people right now, according to early season pre-ranking stuff, obviously people are saying Arkansas and, and Alabama and Auburn and even Kentucky are kind of that strong in front of people. I think you guys can be right there with that group as well. But who would you say is your team they're most excited to go up against? Like, is there one of those teams that a rivalry like will miss? Like, who are you most excited to compete against this year? Man, I, I don't know. I really – I feel like every team going to be uh, a great matchup for us. Um, of course, there's some teams I, I, I feel like I need to get back or our team need to get back, like Alabama, LSU, Kentucky, you know. All those teams, I feel like everybody, everybody needs – Everybody got to get got to get a taste of us. So we might be asleep this year, but everybody know what it is when we step on that floor. So. Absolutely, man. Well, a couple more things before I let you go, one of which is I was like wrapping up discussing your legacy. I know all guys want to remember for something. So when that day does come, you decide to step away from this game someday. What do you want to remember it for, for what you achieved both on and off the court? What do I want to be remembered for? Um, just the guy that um, gave it all. A guy that gave it all uh, every night. Um, somebody who, um, who you could say like, hey, that that dude was serious. Like he, he could play, and he ain't gonna quit. Somebody like that, just somebody who me remember like that. Um, that's all I gotta ask for. And I know we've discussed it a few times about this interview, but you also are a believer. I know you're very vocal about your faith as well. So kind of walk us to your faith. Like, how has God helped get you to the point that you're at today? Man, God helps me in so many ways, man. I, uh, I try to talk to God every day, every night. Um, he's just, he's so inspirational. He just helped me get to where I am. And um, I wouldn't be here without him. So just um, constantly praising and constantly um, believing in him just helped me get to my um, situation I am at now and will continue to bless me. So I'm so thankful for um, him and his blessings and his sacrifice. So. And that's something I love about you, too, because there's obviously a lot of guys that are believers in the basketball world, but there's not too many that are vocal like you are. There's not too many that want to go out there spreading his light, putting stuff on social media, and that's what you've decided to take that route. So what's led you to that? What's led you to be vocal about your faith and be able to spread God's light throughout the life, even though it might be difficult with obviously not all believers being out there? I just – I feel like for me, I ain't have any choice. Like, Mm -hmm. all these blessings that I have, like, that's the least I can do, you know? I just have all these, like I said, all these um, continual blessings and being able to um, wake up every morning and being able to do what I love, play the sport I love, and work on my craft these days. It's just some people can be, some people don't get the opportunity and some people don't get scholarships and stuff like that. So that's just, there's no other answer for it than God. So I just continue to praise Him each day and show my gratitude. What would you say is the biggest moment you've seen God show up in your life so far? The biggest moment? Um, I say 
man, that's hard. It's a lot of moments, man. I I can know, I know one particularly was in high school, um, in high school in Kuku, just just seeing like that year pass and um, just being able to, to say like, hey, I, I gave my all and I earned a scholarship to play at this school. And in the back of my head, I was like, well, I, well, I play D1, I do all this, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I just kept my faith strong and kept um, working. And I feel like whatever, whatever um, I desire, if I put God first, like it can happen. So. And then, man, my final two questions for you are the first one. We obviously saw a huge jump you just had last year. I personally have you as a guy that's going to be competing for an all-conference team this upcoming season. But what's the jump you have expected for yourself? Where do you, what kind of level do you think you can take your game to this upcoming season? I feel like take my game to the uh, NBA level and trying to um, achieve, like, personal goals and um, trying to win. I feel like that's that was the biggest factor between me and, um, I don't know, some other bigs that might have got um, – all the CC and stuff like that. Is they they were winning, so I feel like um, winning winning contributes to everybody. Like winning, uh, it, it shines light on every player. So I feel like that's the that's the biggest thing. I feel like with um, me and our team is I want to win, and you know, whatever it takes to win is what I'm willing to do. So absolutely. Now my final thing for you: give Mississippi State fans your three biggest goals you have set. For the main year Mississippi State career, so the biggest three goals. Um, I want to win. The, we want to win the conference for one. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want. We want the fans to all come out for two, and we want that, the home to be packed. Uh, and for three, uh, I want to get as far as we can in the NCAA tournament. Absolutely, man. Well, congratulations on the big year again, man. I'm excited to see what God got next for you, and I appreciate you taking time to come on today. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Of course, man. Y'all welcome on, man. God bless. God bless.